Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today we're going to do a small repair on this Batman Returns Catwoman statue from uh, Tweeterhead. It's a really cool statue. I'm actually get, glad to see this in person. I'm really liking a lot of the stuff Tweeterhead is putting out lately. And this one is actually really cool. I'm glad to see it. Uh, it's really sculpted, well done. I really like a lot of the wrinkles and everything. It's just a really cool looking statue. So somebody contacted me and they wanted to repair the broken arm. So they sent me a baggie with these little pieces. Uh, two of them, uh, we're not even going to utilize them. We're going to have to kind of rebuild this whole wall up here. So you can see this is the arm with the whip and it goes in here like so. Now the problem is, as you can see, it kind of broke down this way. Now the problem is, you can't really build up a thin wall and put this in there. It's probably just going to break again. So we have to kind of thicken the wall in a sense. So if we can get this in the camera right, you can kind of see the way this peg is. It's kind of like a half a circle and then, well it's kind of a circle and then it cuts off in a little bit line right there. So that's how this key is created. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to cut off that top of that circle up there. So it's going to be like almost like a rectangle. Because this way when I start building the wall with either A's or Magiscope, whichever I, I'm probably going to use Magiscope maybe, we'll see. It'll be a thicker wall and it'll hold it in better because if it's just a thin wall it'll break down again. So we don't want to do that. Now one of the other things too about this project is... She's a very like sleek, shiny black, so we can't get any kind of like uh, residue onto it because you can ruin that. And also, we got to be careful of these fingers and stuff. We don't want to break it and cause even more work. So, these are one of these projects where it's going to be very slow, but we got to be very careful. And the pro other problem is too is when we build the wall, I'm going to have to build out a little bit and then sand it down, and then we got to kind of match up this gloss black. So what I'm probably doing is just looking at it just just right off the bat. Probably what I'm going to have to do is mask her off as much as I can, you know, with saran wrap and stuff once I start using the Aves. Whenever I do any sanding work, I'm going to have to mask her off. It's going to get a little bit dusty. And then what I'll have to do is when I'm ready to do the gloss black, I might have to kind of mask off this whole arm and then hit it with like the uh, Duplicolor clear car paint or something. So this way I can kind of match this gloss there because I don't really have much paint that might actually uh, do that. I don't know. I could try... Um, some of this uh, spastic high gloss black and see how that works, see if it kind of matches it off the bat, but I'm still pretty sure that even the factory did a nice good uh, gloss coat on this as well. So it's just one of those things that, you know, even though it's just simple gloss black, you really kind of try to match it all. So I might have to just kind of match the arm and go from there. But yeah, it's one of those things. And then one of the other little things too is simple fix is this, uh, I guess this little stairway area on the back of this it broke off. Uh, so we're probably going to have to just use some glue and do that because I don't think I could really do much. If I have to kind of use some A's around it to secure it, I might, and then I could just touch it up with some paint. We haven't gotten that far, but right now we're going to focus on this arm first. So let me go to the garage right now. I'm going to sand this down, and we'll come back and just show you. And hopefully there's enough room there where the magnet will stay in and I could kind of create it. The magnet looks pretty thick too, so we'll see what okay, happens. Okay, so I went in the garage and I chopped that up. You could sort of see it's almost looking like a hexagon type thing. We got kind of a curve, then we got a straight line, then we got another straight line, and then another little curve. So it's going to be keyed out pretty well. It should go in there no problem whatsoever. So the next step is I got to be very careful. I'm going to go in the garage and I'm going to sort of dremel out a little bit in this area here and bring this down a little bit and sort of dremel into this black top part around there because I got to have the A's or Magiscope, whatever you use, have it push down and go around and make it work and then sand it down. It's it's You got to have sort of like a thick secured area than just trying to build up this little bit of a wall. Otherwise, like I said, we can go through all this work building a thin wall and then you can put in a key and just break it off by accident. So we really have to have sort of like a chunk that's kind of in pushed in there. Think of it like as a, I guess if you're a dentist and you're, you're building out a tooth, you got to kind of dremel in and dremel some areas and really secure it. So you got to kind of work like that. So I'm going to go in the garage. I'm going to be very careful. Take my time. Make sure I don't break anything on her. Drumble some of this out and we'll come back and then hopefully we can start putting some Aves or Magic Sculpt in there. Alright, so uh, we got her chopped up a little bit over here as you can see. And uh, a little bit thicker area to build up now. So we got some Magic Sculpt uh, already mixed up and we got some baby powder. And I sort of lightly wrapped her up in Saran Wrap. I don't want to keep the Saran Wrap on too long. Uh, only because it's a clear paint. Usually the factories that come from China, Saran Wrap doesn't really hurt a lot of stuff, but you never can be too sure. So, with uh, Magisculpt, since Magisculpt is always uh, a little bit stronger, 
what I like to do is just take a chunk of it and start pushing it in the area. Now, like I said, I'm probably going to start making this a little bit messy only because uh, we're going to have to do the touch up. But the reason why she's wrapped up now is one, if I get any residue on my fingers, we don't hit the sculpt. And two, we don't get any baby powder all over the black area on the statue. So we sort of build up a little bit on the side. Now uh, we have to get the arm. Uh, this is a little bit of the tricky part too. So get a little bit of baby powder. Kind of, I don't want to lose focus. So I'm just going to throw a little baby powder on top of this piece here. I'm going to get my desk all dirty, which I hate, but I'll have to vacuum it up. And then sort of go like this. Put this in there like so. Sort of start building up the area. And we want to make sure we get it going. Now what happened is we have magic sculpt that got down onto this part which we got to kind of take out. We want to try to keep it as close to the key the magnet hitting magnet. So we'll put some more baby powder onto the bottom of this. And then go for round two. And then what I'm doing is I'm kind of pushing the magic sculpt around that key area. Let's see now. Looking pretty good. Starting to build up. What's probably going to happen now that I'm working on this is we're going to have to like let this sit and then sort of sand it down and then maybe go over with a the detail anything I need to detail. So what I like to try to do is kind of keep doing this for a little while. We're going to turn her and make sure I got her lined up correctly. Make sure it's kind of in that area. We want to make sure that it's pushing against the new key we made and then also it's grabbing on all the other areas. Now, it's kind of hard to try to start smoothing this out right now. It's just not going to happen. We want to make sure this key lasts. So I think what I'm going to have to do is let this sit for like an hour or so and come back and then try to key again and just make sure that we're kind of going in the correct position. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is we're going to go set up on the other desk because I get better lighting over there. We'll show you how the key looks like looking downwards. And then hopefully within like an hour or two, it'll harden up. I can kind of make sure everything's kind of staying correctly. And then maybe by tomorrow we can start sanding and doing a little bit of A's work. And then hopefully we'll get the key all set up. All right, so you see what we're looking at. I don't want to make a drop, but you see we're kind of creating that whole new key. It's the inside that we're worried about right now. We're not worried about the outside. The outside can always be touched up and seamed down. It's the inside is the problem. We want to make sure all that's lined up correctly. So like I said, we'll be back probably in an hour or so. Hopefully this cures up and we could just keep making sure. But one of the worst parts of the whole problem right now, which is not a big deal, this stuff can actually be washed out, is just getting baby powder all on this piece as you can see what happens. But that's not a big deal. That could always be cleaned up. Okay, so we're about the two hour mark. It's pretty stiff, uh, a little bit soft still, but still there. So when we put this in here, it pretty much lines up very well where I want it to be. So we're looking good. It's still not completely perfect. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna let this cure overnight, pretty much cleaning up for today anyway. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll kind of mask her off again, a little bit better this time, and we'll do some sand work on this. And then after that, what we might have to do is put a little bit of eaves around there, kind of clean it up. Probably put a little eaves around the edge and then make sure that this piece goes in there flush and that there's no like gaps or anything. So uh, we'll just wait till tomorrow and see how this works out. 
All right, it's the next day and I had a chance to sand this down a little bit. So I used some regular 220 uh, sandpaper and I have some of this foam sandpaper to lightly sand it. So I got it nice and smooth. There's a little bit of a line here, I guess for the outfit, I'm gonna have to score out of there, which isn't really a big deal, we'll do that later. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just testing it all out. So this goes in there pretty fine, but we're still a little bit loose. So what I'm going to do is I mixed up a little bit of Aves. They didn't really need a lot. This is still more than what I need. Uh, we're going to set up where I'm going to mask all this off because I don't want to handle her while I'm messing with Aves. And we're going to put a little bit of Aves around the edge here and around here. And we're going to push the glove in with some baby powder. And we're going to try to get a nice, good, perfect seam line. It's going to kind of squeeze around the Aves. But that's okay, once we sand that down after that cures, we'll have a nice uh, solid piece that works out. And it's just a matter of getting the line scored in and then touching up any paint. Alright, so uh, we got some of the Aves all set up and we got her masked off. I'm just masked her off enough so I don't have any residue on my hands or fingers. Uh, I was just kind of toying with it too just before just to make sure I know what I need to do. And it's just a matter of putting this around there. We don't want to fill up the hole though, that's the problem. I want to get it around the area. So we're going to have to probably cut some of this out. Like so. And then uh, sort of give it a little bit of a grip around the edge of there and that's kind of where we want to be at the moment so then uh, I'm over here in the garbage can I got to kind of put some baby powder over here I hate putting baby powder onto the uh, table so you can see I put a lot on there and around make sure we don't have too much in there because sometimes the baby powder can get packed so if you have to kind of get a little bit out and then uh, what we do is grab our piece which I put away because I don't want to snap it. And then what we try to do is get this going like so. Alright, and what happens is any of this eaves that you push down kind of comes back up because of the baby powder, but we need to take that out. So I'm going to throw a little bit more baby powder in here because sometimes after you pull up the baby powder it might get sticky again. And just do it one more time. Okay, we don't want to press our luck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set her aside. We're going to let this cure up for a good, I don't know, hour or so. And then I'll come back and I'll test it again but see how it kind of squishes up and it goes around the piece. Uh, that's kind of what we want, but the inside, the key is actually working out pretty cool. So we're looking good. So we're gonna let this uh, cure up, we'll come back, we'll see how it works out, and then uh, we're gonna do have to do the sanding again, and then we can start touching up the details. Now, any dirtiness that's on here, uh, on this piece, will be able just to kind of wash off with some water. It won't be that big of a deal. So I'll probably just kind of wash this off for now. And we're going to let this sit. But I'm going to unmask. I'm going to take up the masking off for too. Because like I said, any type of like clear coat stuff like this, I don't like masking sitting on too long because uh, it might grab it. Like if you have flat paints that aren't really as, you know, like this, I always get worried because it's probably got a clear coat. But uh, yeah, we'll be back in like an hour or so and see how I sanded that down today. So we're looking pretty good. So I went over here and made sure everything's looking good. I sanded all this down. So there might be a couple spots I missed. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask her off and we're going to get some of this uh, black primer and we're going to prime her up and see if there's anything going on. I did try to work out a little bit of a line here. I might have to work out that a little bit more too as well. We'll see. But other than that, we're looking pretty good. It's not completely tight, but if I made it too tight, uh, it would probably snap again. So you got to have a little bit of a looseness to it. But I think we're, we're looking good. I think it's on there pretty well, as you can see. And it's just a matter of now of touching it all up and then uh, finishing it off. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hit this with a little bit of primer just to make sure everything's good. So we're going to hit primer for two reasons. One, we're going to make sure that, you know, any paint we put on it sticks. And two, 
uh, we want to make sure that there's no errors that we're missing. So I have a Vallejo uh, Surface Primer, which is black. It's really great stuff. I like this a lot. I just picked up this bottle myself for a larger one. Uh, I use this for a lot of projects now. Uh, it's uh, This black paint is actually really good. Even though it's a primer, you can use it as black paint. The Vallejo regular black paint is really nice too. It goes on super smooth, except it's very expensive for a little bottle. So for certain projects, you can just get away with that. So once we put up the primer, what I'll do is I'll just kind of hit it with this flashlight and look around just to make sure I'm not missing any parts, you know. What I'm probably going to try to look for is anything from the resin to where I put the Magic Sculpt and Aves to make sure all that's smooth. Because sometimes maybe I miss something and there might be a little something I have to kind of fill in. So what I'll probably do is use a Tamiya Putty. Just go in there, hit it with a little bit of putty, fill it in, let it dry, sand it down, and then prime it again. So once it's all primed up and ready to go, we'll come back and we'll just use some... Uh, uh, high gloss uh, Spaztec paint through the airbrush. We'll get some uh, nice gloss paint on there. Uh, if it looks like the gloss paint's working out perfect close to the gloss paint there, then we don't have to do anything. But I have a funny feeling we're still going to have to kind of give it a gloss coat. So I also have this uh, Ultra Shine Clear Acrylic Enamel from Spaztec. So what I might do is kind of just, you know, try to hit it at an angle going this way. and Try not to spray too much there, just to gloss up that area. So it's kind of just like we got to try to capture that glossiness as much as possible. Or what I like I said in the beginning, I might have to mask off the whole arm with some silly putty and just kind of spray the arm down and just make everything uniform to where it has the stitching. So that's where we're at now. So I'm just going to hit this with some black primer. We'll go and get this finished up. Okay, so I just masked her off this morning and I gloss her out with the Spaztec Clear. So when I did the gloss black on the arm here, it got the glossy, but the problem was is kind of you get the overspray in the middle of the arm here. It got kind of dull and then we go back to the glossiness of the original factory paint. I knew that was going to happen. It just It's one of those things where you got to kind of paint a whole section. Uh, that's just the way it was going to work. But now that I put the clear on this arm, it's going to should match up the rest of the item. I'm going to let it kind of cure up a little bit before I even try to take anything off. I just made sure I sprayed in this direction. I tried not to spray any really heavy gloss over here, just mostly up here and around here. But at least it kind of looks like the factory paint now as close as possible. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cure up for a bit. And then I'll come back uh, later today and uh, just kind of take off all the masking. And then hopefully by tomorrow it'll be kind of cured up. The spastic stuff takes a little bit extra longer to kind of cure. I like to give it at least like, you know, maybe 24 to 48 hours of cure time just to make sure. Uh, but it's really, really glossy and it really works out pretty good, especially for this kind of a repair. We'll throw this into the repair video as well to give you guys an idea what I'm doing here. So uh, this little piece was broken off. Uh, I guess what happened was... There was uh, spikes coming out of uh, these pieces that would go on there and then this stuff would uh, kind of glue into these as well. So uh, what I did was I dremeled out a hole on each of these. Now what I must have did is I must have hit some glue plus it's plastic so you can see I used this dremel tool with uh, just a drill bit. So it melts up plus I got a big whiff of like burning glue into my face. So that's just one of those things where I don't know if they tried to glue this or the factory used some type of like super glue type stuff. So it was really bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do is it's pretty simple. Uh, what I did is I uh, took the, the rod and I put the rod in here and I would cut pieces off. So this way it's going to be like kind of like a new peg. Uh, I would normally would use probably Aves or something with this if it was a little bit bigger and thicker. But Aves is not really going to do much. So I'm just going to use some glue. And what I'm probably going to do is just uh, put some glue on, put some glue into here and here. Put some glue into these pieces. Now this one broke a little bit in here, uh, but not that much to the point where I had to kind of rebuild it. Just a nice piece of glue. Uh, you know, this is just kind of kind of be glued. That's pretty much all you can really do. So I'll put some glue here, 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 and all over there, and I'll let this piece kind of sit and uh, kind of cure up and get in there pretty well. And then once that's done, I could just probably get in there with just some black paint and kind of just hit some black paints around any glue that might kind of go around and stuff but it's one of those pieces where uh it kind of broke into the point where it's salvageable but sometimes plastic stuff like this when it breaks you might lose the keys and stuff and then you got to kind of rebuild or kind of re figure out something like normally if 
something like this over here broke pretty bad, what I would do is I would just kind of like re-sculpt around it and make it look like it was kind of welded back together, like really a shoddy job type weld-like look. That's kind of what I would go for if this was really, really bad. So, you know, sometimes uh, when your stuff breaks, you got to just improvise and maybe make something else out of it. But uh, I'll just put a couple dabs of glue around here and stuff and get this back on and then uh, touch it up with some paint. Okay, so the arm is all finished up. Looks like it's a uh, factory uh, peen up now. It's uh, We got the uh, piece that goes in and out. I did a little a couple spots over here that I had to touch up with the uh, stitching. And then uh, the base is all finished up too. So this piece is on the base with no issues. So there you go. That is a repair for the tweeter head uh, Catwoman. Uh, hopefully it helped you guys out if you ever have to do a repair on your own. Thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.